Seven, seven, seven to the Most High God. Almighty Father, 
blessed be your name. Heavenly Father, you are Hashem El Elyon, the creator and the possessor of the universe, who created the heavens and the earth by the words of your mouth. We stand before your presence to extol you and glorify your name in commemoration of your works of creation. On the first day, you divided light and darkness and thus established day and night. On the second day, you separated the waters above the firmament from the waters beneath and thereby established the atmosphere and the sky. On the third day, you formed the dry land and the seas and caused the dry land to bring forth vegetation so that there should be food for man and for beasts. On the fourth day, you established the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars and other heavenly bodies to give light to the universe and to be used in the reckoning of times, seasons, and the appointed festivals. On the fifth day, you commanded the waters to bring forth living creatures, such as the birds of the air and all the fishes and swarming water creatures. On the sixth day, you created all the beasts of the earth, the mammals, the cattle, amphibians, as well as creeping and swarming insects. Lastly, on the same sixth day, you formed man, male and female, in your own image and likeness, to be the heir and ruler over the works of creation on earth. On the seventh day, you rested from your works of creation. Hashem, you blessed the seventh day and hallowed it to be an everlasting memorial and a perpetual covenant, so that all generations of mankind should observe it and hold a holy convocation in honor of your glorious majesty and in giving praises to your great name, O thou who inhabits the glory of Israel. We thank you immensely for granting your holy Shabbat rest to us, our people who do not deserve this glorious fellowship, but we find ourselves today sharing in it. We also stand before thee to extol and exalt your great and holy name, Hashem Adonenu for your love and your kindness towards your people of this generation, Israel in diaspora, whom you have gathered in this part of the world. You have granted unto us life, good health, protection, and equally blessed us so as to join the heavenly angelic beings, even the saints in the earth, and all the works of your hands in observing today's Shabbat rest. For all these, we bow ourselves before thee, in worship and adoration, and we say, May all glory, may all honor, may all might, may all majesty, may all respect, may all splendor, may all perfection, may all bond sacrifices, may all hallelujah. May all Hosanna, may all Baruch Hashim, me, our heads and our knees. Me, our heads and our knees. Me, our heads and our knees.
Come, let us sing unto Hashem. Let us blow the shofar to the rock of our salvation. Let us greet him with thanksgiving, praises, and songs. Let us kneel and bow down to him in worship. For he is our maker, a mighty God, and great is his kingdom with dominion and power above all the universe. May it be your will, Hashem, our Adonenu, and the Elohim of Israel, who chose King David and his descendants after him, to sing songs of praises unto your holy name. Hearken, and mercifully beseech thee to this psalm that I shall recite, and consider it as if King David have recited it himself. May the merit of the verses of this psalm stand in our favor. Together with the merit of their works, letters, vowels, and cantillations, and together with the holy name formed from the initial and final letters, Yud, He, Vav, He. May the merit of your righteous name bring atonement for our transgressions, iniquities, and sin. May an abundant blessing be drawn to our spirit, breath, and soul, to purify us of our iniquities, to purge our sins, and to atone for our transgressions, just as you forgive, you forgive King David, who recited this very same psalm before you. May we not be taken away from this world before our time, before the completion of our years, assignments, and purpose, so that we may have the opportunity through your will to rectify anything we may have ruined and to be at peace with you, Salah. To you, O Hashem, we lift up our souls. O our God, we put our trust in you. Please let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over us. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without us. Show us your ways, O Hashem. Teach us your paths. Please lead us in your truth and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. And on you we wait all the day. Remember, O oh Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of our youths, nor our transgressions. According to your mercy, remember us for your goodness sake, O oh Hashem. Good and upright is Hashem. Therefore, he teaches sinners on the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his ways. All the paths of Hashem are mercy and truth, to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Hashem, please pardon our iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears Hashem? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Our eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck our feet out of the net. Turn yourself to us and have mercy on us, for we are desolate and afflicted. The troubles of our hearts are enlarged. Please bring us out of our distresses. Look upon our affliction and our pain and forgive all our sins. Consider our enemies, for they are many, and they hate us with cruel hatred. Please keep our soul and deliver us, for you let us not be ashamed, for we put our trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve us, for we wait on thee. Redeem the community of Hashem, redeem Israel, O Hashem, out of all our troubles. And all the angels stood round about the throne with the 24 elders and all creatures fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped Hashem saying, Amen, Amen, blessings and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, power and might be unto our God forever and ever.
Blessed, extolled, magnified, and exalted be your name, the supreme commander of the whole universe, the covenant-keeping God, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You have done it again in the midst of your children, granting us the wonderful opportunity to be in your presence again. Thank you so much for the teachings and the sanctifications we've been receiving. Thank you so much for your love upon your children. Thank you for your protection, O Lord, upon each and every one of us. Thank you for the gift of the Torah, for the gift of sound doctrine. Thank you so much for the teaching priest you have given to us, your servant, Bekohen Gadol. We thank you for the strength you have granted unto him all through these days. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We bless your name. Thank you, our Father in heaven, for we have not allowed, you've never allowed the plans of the enemy to prevail in our lives. Despite the hardship and the critical situation of this country, Nigeria, you have still provided for your children. And you have not allowed the fire on your altar to be extinguished. Immortal Redeemer, we thank you. Ancient of those, we bless your name. We bless your name for giving us what you have hidden from the wise and the prudent of the earth. That is what you have given to us who are babes and sucklings. Not because you are righteous, not because you are too wise, not because you are faithful. But it is out of your love and your mercy upon your children. Father, we give all the glory to you. We appreciate you for what you have done. Be thou exalted, Father. Be thou priest forever. We say that our generation will continue to praise your name because you are our God. And we are proud to say that you are the only true God. Beside it, there is no other God. May your name be lifted above all names now and forevermore. We humble ourselves before your presence because our eyes have been opened and we have seen that we have fallen short of your glory again. We kneel before your presence to confess our sins. The most gracious Father, the most compassionate Elohim, please look upon us with the eyes of pity. We know that even the commandments you've given to us, we've not been able to carefully observe them even the way you have commanded us. We know we've made series of mistakes. We know we've been careless. We know we've been arrogant. We know we've been proud. Father, we beg you to have mercy upon us. Do not cast us away from your presence. It is only you that is holy. Mortal man cannot claim perfection. Even in the face of our effort, we are still unworthy before your presence, but we call upon your name everlasting Father. Please, out of your perfection, perfect our imperfections. Grant us your grace that we may find favor before your sight. Wash us thoroughly, Father, in heaven. Cleanse us and wipe away every judgment brought against us, O God of Israel, as a result of our misdeeds. Wash us and sanctify us by your power. In your mighty name we pray. Release your spirit upon our systems, because mortal man cannot be able to please you without the power from on high. Let your spirit, O God of Israel, come upon your children that you may be able to do your will. Grant us the spirit that will enable us to put into practice all that we have been taught. The spirit that will enable us to fear you, to reverence you because you are a true God and you are also the consuming fire. We call upon your name everlasting Father. Grant us that power that will enable us to obey you, to fear you even in the secret and the open, and to do that which you've commanded, commanded us and equally teach it to our generations that it may be well with us all the days of our lives, O Lord. In your mighty name we pray. We know that whenever your children are gathered before your presence, that the enemy also comes. But we call upon your name, everlasting Father. Disregard every of his threats in the midst of your children. Whatever are his manipulations to scatter your purpose concerning our lives or to make our gathering today to become ineffective, I call upon your name, everlasting Father, to scatter the plans of the enemy. Whatever is the plan of the kingdoms of darkness to make our festival null and void, we call upon your name, everlasting Father, destroy their plans. Every kingdom of darkness that is holding meeting against your children, holding meeting against our gathering, Father, we command your fire to locate them. Disorganize their gatherings, O God of Israel. Whatever that they are planning against your children, I pray that I bring them to naught. Let them not prevail in the midst of your children. In your mighty name we pray. A lot have come before your presence with different kinds of manipulations, different kinds of challenges, O God. I call upon your name everlasting Father. Let your power of redemption hit your children mightily. Redeem your children from all forms of bondage, spiritual bondage, physical bondage, financial bondage, bondage to sickness and different kinds of captivity. Set your children free because in your presence anointing breaks the yoke. 
In your presence there is liberty. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Let your power manifest in the midst of your children. I pray as your children have come before your presence with diverse problems. At the end of our service and our rejoicing before your presence, O oh Lord, they shall look for these present problems and they shall see them no more. In your mighty name we pray. Hashem, it is you that has called us. We know that you have called us for you to talk to us. We know that you have called us for you to sanctify us. We know that you have called us, O oh Lord, for you to renew our covenant with you. We call upon your name everlasting Father. That purpose for which you have called your children, O oh Lord, let it come to manifestation in the midst of your children. Sanctify us, O oh God of Israel, even as we appear before your presence. Bless your children mightily. Today is your day. Let no power of darkness come to manifest. Let your glory descend, O oh God. We present your servant, Nikohen Gadol, before your presence, asking you, Father, to continue to strengthen him. There are lots of works for him to do. I pray for the empower empowerment from on high. Sanctify him and strengthen him, O oh God of Israel. Through him, bless your children mightily. Grant him more wisdom, grant him more knowledge and understanding to continue to teach your children the sound doctrine. Take away any kind of sickness and any kind of weakness, O oh Lord. Be with him that all he's going to do, O oh God of Israel, will please him before your sight. In your mighty name we pray. As we continue with the services of today, continue with us. At the end of it, all, oh Father, all glory will return to you. We give you glory, we give you honor. Because you know, verse our prayers. May your name be lifted above all names, now and forevermore. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart find favor before your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, for in your mighty name we have prayed. Shalom. Elu 28, 5782. Corresponding to September 24, 2022. Nitzavim. Nitzavim. Hebrew word for one's standing. Reading from the Torah. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 through 14. Reading from the prophets. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1 through 5. The parasha. Moses, through divine inspiration, said to the people, You are standing today, all of you before Hashem, your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, your small children, your women, and your proselytes, who is in the midst of your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water. For you shall pass into the covenant of Hashem, your God, and into his imprecation that Hashem your God seals with you today in order to establish you today as a people unto him and that he be a God unto you as he spoke to you and as he swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Furthermore, Moses was inspired to declare to the people and said, Not with you alone do I seal this covenant and this imprecation, but with whoever is here, standing with us today before Hashem, our God, and with whoever is not here with us today. The half terror. Prophet Isaiah was inspired and he said, For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be still. Until her righteousness emanates like bright light and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will perceive your righteousness and all the kings your honor. And you will be called by a new name, which the mouth of Hashem will pronounce. Then you will be a crown of splendor in the hand of Hashem, and a royal diadem in the palm of your God. It will no longer be said of you, forsaken one, and of your land. It will no longer be said, desolate place, for you will be called, my desire is in her, and your land inhabited. As a young man takes a maiden in marriage, so will your children settle in you. And like a bridegroom's rejoicing over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. 613 codified laws. Positive commandments 181 through 185. 181. Judges and leaders of the community must be chosen according to the law of God. Deuteronomy 16 verse 18. 182. Judges and leaders of the community chosen by God must judge the people impartially according to God's laws. Leviticus 19 verse 15. 183. Whoever is aware of evidence in his case must speak up and testify. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. 184. The testimony of witnesses shall be judged according to the law. Deuteronomy 13 verse 14. 
185. False witnesses shall be judged according to the law. Deuteronomy 19 verse 19. Prohibitions. 254 through 260. 254. Do not allow your daughter to play the harlot, allowing her to commit fornication. Leviticus 19 verse 29. A man must not take back again as wife, nor have sexual relations with a woman who returns to him after marriage and sexual relations with another man. Deuteronomy 24, verse 4, 2, 5, 6. A childless widow must not marry anybody outside her husband's family. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5, 2, 5, 7. A man must not divorce a woman he married after having seduced her. Deuteronomy 22, verse 29, 2, 5, 8. A man must not divorce a woman he married after having slandered her. Deuteronomy 22 verse 19. 259. No one who is castrated shall enter the holy priesthood. Deuteronomy 23 verse 1. 260. A man must not divorce a woman unless he finds some unseemliness in her, causing her to find no favor in his eyes. Deuteronomy 24 verse 1. Interpretation. Our relationship with God is an unbreakable covenant. In the last day of his life, Moses reminded the nation of Israel of this, and he initiated the entire nation for the last time into the covenant with God. The key concept that this exercise brought to light is responsibility for one another, under which every Jew is obligated to help others observe the Torah. The laws of God are not meant for Israel alone. The first word of this reading in Hebrew is Nitzavim, and it is translated in English as standing, for the verse says, You are standing today, all of you, before Hashem your God. Deuteronomy 29 verse 13. However, standing is not a strong enough word in English to translate the true intent of Nitzavim. Which root word is translated in other places in the Torah as standing erect or as a pillar? For instance, while talking about Lot's wife, the scripture says she became a nitzav, which is translated in English as pillar of salt. See Genesis 19 verse 26, implying that she stood erect, firm, straight, or steady. Hence, the basic implication of this Hebrew word nitzav is standing erect, standing straight, standing steady, or standing firm, etc. So, the message here is that Moses was speaking to a people who were standing on the shores of the Jordan River, across from Jericho. Notice that this portion is read from Deuteronomy chapter 29, which is already towards the end of Moses' farewell speech to the children of Israel, and just before he went up to Pisgah to die. The people he spoke to were already standing firm, straight, steady, or erect in the sun, in the desert, where it is hot and dusty. And this was just before Passover, when the Jordan River Valley could already be as hot as upper 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The people were already there a couple of hours or more, both old and young, men and women and children. It was to these people, so standing, that Moses addressed, saying, you are standing here erect, firm, straight, steady, and not sitting down. Today, all of you, before Hashem your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, your small children and your women, and your proselytes who is in the midst of your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water, as we see in Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 through 11. From these verses, it is noted that the people said to be standing, waiting to hear what they had been guarded for, were not only the Israelites, but also the strangers that is in your camp, for the hewer of your wood unto the drawer of your water. Deuteronomy 29, 11. Who are the strangers? The strangers in the context of our reading are those non-Israelites called the mixed multitude, who followed the people of Israel during the exodus from Egypt, just as the verse says. And the mixed multitude went up also with them. Exodus 12, verse 38. These people went with the children of Israel into the wilderness and continued journeying with them all through their wilderness wanderings. 
from some portions of the scripture. It is inferred that they were the ones who instigated Israel to sin against God, just as the verse states. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the dish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Numbers 11 verse 4 and verse 5. For this and all the acts of ungratefulness and unfaithfulness, God responded with a total extinction of the people of that generation, except of two men, Joshua and Caleb. Just as the verse says, Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracle which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not listened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Numbers chapter 14, verse 22 and 23, and verse 30. However, God did not destroy those people with their posterity, for he promised to make their children to enter into the promised land, just as the verse says in Numbers 14, verse 31. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. That promise will only fulfill after 40 years, to ensure that the cursed generation were all gone, just as the verse says, in Numbers 14, verse 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your wardens, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. It is worthy to note that the children talked about here include those of the Israelites and also of the strangers, who are the mixed multitude. So, when we read that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for forty years, we should also bear in mind that the account includes the children of the mixed multitudes. And that fact is evidenced by the words of Moses to the people 40 years later when he said, The stranger that is in your camp, from the hewer of your wood, unto the drawer of your water. Deuteronomy 29 verse 11. So, it is possible that these people are the descendants of the mixed multitude. With that hindsight, let us see what these people, both the Israelites and the non-Israelites, were standing to do. From the Torah portion, we read the words of Moses to them all, saying, For you to pass into the covenant of Hashem, your God, and into his oath that Hashem, your God, seals with you today, in order to establish you today as a people to him, and that he be a God to you, as he spoke to you, and as he swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as we see in Deuteronomy 29, from verse 9 through verse 12. This reading is deeply touching when we recall that the people Moses spoke to were the generation that was born in the Sinai wilderness, the ones that were fed with nothing else but the manna from heaven, who ate the quails and also drank water from the rocks. The ones who walked with Moses 40 years were taught the Torah directly by him. They were the ones being invited to now stand before Hashem as one united body of people to pass into the covenant of Hashem your God and into his oath that Hashem your God seals with you today in order to establish you today as a people to him. Moreover, there were also the ones that entered the promised land and co-inherited with Israel. But Moses, the major actor in this whole drama, and who was then talking to them on the principles that shall sustain and prosper them in the land, will not enter the land with them. This observation goes to tell us the kind of person this man Moses was. He was a man who had great respect for God. He was the one who taught the people to heed every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, from the mouth of that God, comes forth the word, saying, Because you believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Numbers 20 verse 12. And Moses respected that instruction 
and went ahead to prepare those whom God had favored to enter into and possess the land adequately so that they could successfully possess that land. So he taught them about the only instrument that could enable that success when in an earlier verse he said to them, Observe therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may make all that you do to prosper. Deuteronomy 29 verse 8. He went further to remind them, saying, For you to pass into the covenant of Hashem, your God, and into his oath that Hashem, your God, seals with you today. Deuteronomy 29 verse 12. Analyzing the words of God, we know that Moses simply encouraged the people to be diligent and obedient to every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because that is the whole purpose of the covenant, just as the verse states. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write you these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Exodus 34 verse 27. Therefore, Moses addressed all the people gathered there and invited them to listen to the reading of the law and to renew their commitment to God through his covenant. Most people who read this text often miss the most important point talked about here and would rather focus on the false assumption that the Torah was given only to the Israelites. But from our study so far, it is very clear that such an assumption is false, as the law of God is not for Israel alone. This false misconception stems from the false teaching in Christendom that the laws of God are meant for Israel alone, because all the laws were addressed to them. But let us see what the scripture says. Number one, acknowledgement. We must first acknowledge the truth that all the laws of God are addressed to the people of Israel and there is no disputing or denying this fact because anyone who picks up the Bible to read will instantly notice that everything recorded in it and please know that it is not only the laws, but the whole content of the Bible, including the blessings as well as the curses, were all addressed to the people of Israel. This infers that the following examples are equally addressed to them. A. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2 and verse 15. B. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. But if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Leviticus 26, 3 and 4, and 14 and 15. C. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock, of whatever passes on the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. Leviticus 27 verse 30, verse 32 and verse 34. D. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Exodus 3 verse 15. E. If you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, to keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, 
which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that heals you. Exodus 15 verse 26. F. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers as it is this day. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. It is noteworthy to mention that every Bible believer should always bear in mind that the whole content of the Bible, whether it is the Old Testament or New Testament, were all addressed to a people known and called Israelites. With that hindsight, our investigation and the study is to know if the laws of God recorded in the Torah are meant only for the Israelites, and to achieve this, we shall research the Bible deeply to know what the function of Israel is in the scheme of God's plan for man's salvation. 2. The function of Israel in God's scheme as relates to the law. Going through the entire scriptures in which we find the mind of God, we see why God gave the laws to Israel. Jesus spoke of the Jewish people and how God chose them to reveal his redemption and his Messiah through the Torah and their lifestyle. For he said, You, Israel, are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. You, Israel, are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candle stand, and it gives light unto all that is in the house. Therefore, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16. A search of the scriptures reveals this purpose of God. For the verse says in the book of Numbers 29 verses 14 and 15, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that stands here with us this day, before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Furthermore, we read in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3, The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Thus God made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Psalm 103 verse 7. By this pronouncement, God made Israel the custodian of his laws, which are also his covenant, customs, and traditions for all mankind. For the verse says, He has revealed his word to Jacob, his principles and laws to Israel. He has not done this with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Psalm 147 verses 19 and 20. Apostle Paul also echoed this fact to the Romans and he said, What advantage then is there in being a Jew, or what value is there in circumcision, much in every way? First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. Romans 3 verses 1 and 2. It is seen clearly that Israel is, in the scheme of God's plan for man's salvation, a custodian, receiver, keeper, and guardian, protector of the Torah on behalf of mankind. 3. The Torah is for all mankind. Therefore, the laws which Hashem gave to Israel are however for all mankind. For the verse says in Numbers 15, verses 15 and 16, and verse 29, and Exodus chapter 12, verse 49. And it says, One ordinance shall be bold for you of the congregation. And also for the stranger that sojourns with you, an ordinance forever in your generations, as you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one custom shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourns with you. Apostle Peter, through the inspiration of God, delivered this same speech as the promise of the Father to the first converts to Judaism on the day of Shavuot. For the verse says, For the promise is unto you and to your children, unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 2 verse 39. It is for this reason that the Bible tells us that on the day of Shavuot, people from different nations who were present in Jerusalem gathered to hear the apostles speak, just as the verse states in Acts 2 verses 5 and 6. 
And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. What were these people from every nation under the heaven doing in Jerusalem? They were there to celebrate Shavuot, one of the feasts of God, which is celebrated 50 days after Pesach. And this is because at that time, the law of God was understood by the whole world to be for all mankind. This implies that if mankind wants to know the mind of God, the way to worship him, those things God requires from him, etc., he goes to the people of Israel and learn from them that which God committed unto them for safekeeping. Apostle Paul talked about this when he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. It is noteworthy to mention that the Bible mentioned Israel extensively and exclusively in the account of God giving his laws. Because when that transaction was made, the only nation that stood before God at the foot of Mount Sinai and who received the laws was Israel. No other nation was mentioned. Moreover, most of the nations who claim ownership of the Bible today were not even founded then. For instance, the nation known as Nigeria today was founded in the year 1914 through the amalgamation of the Southern and Northern Protectorate by Lord Lugard. America was founded in the year 1776, Canada 1867, Mexico 1810, Australia 1901, Ghana 1957, Cameroon, 1960, etc. The point being made here is that none of these nations were at the foot of Mount Sinai on the day God gave his laws. However, Hashem, being the all-knowing God, made a codice which shall enable the non-Israelite to participate in the observance of the laws when he said, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that stands here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Numbers 29 verses 14 and 15. Therefore, the law of God given to Israel are not meant for them alone. Rather, they are meant for all mankind. Whether Jews or Gentile, the criteria is not one's color, language, gender, or nationality. Rather, it is the willingness to accept, to keep all the contents of the Torah. It is disheartening to say that what the people of this generation are suffering from is ignorance brought upon them by politics. Because when true religion, which is the worship of the God of Israel, was the uniting factor among all nations that believed and accepted him as their God, the people gathered three times in the year to worship him by the celebration of his appointed times. Just as the verse says in Deuteronomy 16 verse 16, Three times in a year shall all your males appear before the Lord your God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Furthermore, we note from this verse that the appointment is usually held in the place chosen by God. For the verse says, Three times in a year shall all your males appear before the Lord your God in the place which he shall choose. In the generation of Jesus and his apostles, the chosen place was Jerusalem. And there, every aspect of his worship was done, and only according to his eternal laws. Hence, there were people staying in Jerusalem at that time who were identified as Jews. How they were Jews, whether Jews by faith or birth, were not stated. But it is clearly stated that they were devout men out of every nation under heaven, as we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 6. And they heard Apostle Peter and the others speak the wonderful work of God. 
in their own native tongues, as we see in Acts 2, verse 9 through verse 11. This was the reason Apostle Peter could say to the gathered crowd, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And also, why Apostle Paul in his own days would boldly say, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Here, we see that Apostle Paul said that the message is the power of God, which is meant for all mankind, given to the Jews first, and then to the Gentiles. This means that God began with those who were available, the Jews first, and then later to the Gentiles. He further explained this when he said, What advantage then is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? March in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. Romans 3 verses 1 and 2. The biggest problem is the inability to comprehend this fact due to what has been programmed into us over the years and centuries through false doctrine and teachings. If only we can make a paradigm shift by heeding the advice of Apostle Paul to Timothy, in which he encouraged him to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, as we see in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Then we shall begin to unlearn all the false doctrines and teachings that we received by learning the truth, which is clearly written in the scriptures. Because the Torah portion of today clearly shows us that God's laws are not for Israel alone, just as Moses said, You are standing here today, all of you, before Hashem your God. The heads of your tribes, your elders, and your officers all the men of Israel, your small children and your women and the stranger who is in the midst of your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water, for you to pass into the covenant of Hashem, your God, and into his oath that Hashem, your God, seals with you today in order to establish you today as a people to him, and that he be a God unto you as he spoke to you and as he swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Deuteronomy 29, from verse 9 through verse 12. This gathering of all the people of all other nations with the people of Israel as one people is an invitation from God for all who believe in Him. Beginning from that generation to eternity, to stay united with Israel and to enter into the covenant of God with them as one people, united by the circumstance of sojourning together in the wilderness for 40 years, eating the manna and the quail, and drinking the water from the rock as one people. Thus, they were one nation united by God, having the joint experience of crossing the Sinai Desert together, fighting the wars together, and having the opportunity through the free will gifts of their gold and jewelry to participate in the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. Now, they were all invited to take part on this occasion of standing across the Jordan River opposite Jericho to hear and recommit themselves in a covenant to be a part of the nation of Israel, to become one with the nation of Israel, to become one people with one destiny bound by the Torah, to share the future of the kingdom of God together in unity and prosperity as one nation under God. To this effect, Moses reminded them all, particularly the children of Israel, that though God made a covenant with Israel's father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the covenant is not with Israel alone, but with whosoever in the future generations that shall commit to be joined with their God through the observance of his Torah, just as the verse says, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that stands here with us this day before the Lord our God. 
and also with him that is not here with us this day. As we see in Numbers 29 verses 14 and 15. It is not worthy to mention that if anyone rejects the laws of God on the grounds that they were given to the Jews alone, that person should also remember that the blessings are meant for the Jews alone because the blessings are the compensations for the observance of the laws. This is the reason the text in Deuteronomy 29 verses 14 and 15 is very important for all believers because it states clearly that the covenant of God with Israel is not exclusively theirs but for everyone who is standing with Israel. This is the message the parasha Nezavim imports that as all the non-Israelites stood with the Israel of old to swear to an oath before God, so we in all generations should be the ones standing with Israel as one in all matter relating to the Torah and its laws. This is the condition upon which we shall enter into our lands of promise and dwell there secure. Oh, Buya, 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 oh, Buya,
Yeah, 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 yeah